For now, decisions are upon us, and we cannot afford delay. Welcome back to Loose Talk, where you join me just after Obama's finished his second inaugural address, the 57th in total. Um, and, of course, it was a grand and is a grand occasion with all the stately ceremonial uh, trappings that come with this almost constitutional crowning that is the inauguration. But it, it strikes quite a l large contrast with the address that President Obama gave four years ago when he first became president in a scene that uh, the movie mogul Steven Spielberg famously described as something he couldn't possibly shoot for Hollywood. This time round it was a much shorter address. At 2,000 words it was still triple the length of Abraham Lincoln's famously pithy second inaugural address, but it was pretty short by modern and particularly by President Obama's standards. Just 16 minutes. We cannot mistake absolutism for principle or substitute spectacle for politics or treat name-calling as reasoned debate. Three things really struck me about this speech. The first is that although it was clothed in the sort of lofty finery that you've come to expect from inaugurations, um, uh, the real content and the messaging was actually unusually political. Um, and I think in the context, the highly polarized context, we, we find ourselves in Washington, D.C. at the moment, it was unusually partisan as well. There were two really clear themes that emerged from it. First, by the standards of such um, addresses, this was unapologetically democratic um, in its agenda. The president specifically mentioned perfecting the equalization of gay rights. He mentioned an aggressive possible program to tackle global warming. And he talked very passionately about immigration reform, all very specific liberal touch points. Our journey is not complete until we find a better way to welcome the striving, hopeful immigrants who still see America as a land of opportunity. Until bright young students and engineers are enlisted in our workforce rather than expelled from our country. Second, um, and even more unusually by the standards of these addresses, this was a, a very specifically fiscal and budgetary address. Now, Obama didn't use the kinds of numbers that he'll surely reserve for his State of the Union address to Congress in three weeks, but he was very plain in terms of um, the fiscal stances that he was prepared to take um, in the build-up to these games of fiscal chicken that are going to renew themselves in the coming weeks. For we, the people, Understand that our country cannot succeed when a shrinking few do very well and a growing many barely make it. We believe that America's prosperity must rest upon the broad shoulders of a rising middle class. Chuck Schumer, the New York senator who was master of ceremonies, very much framed the whole occasion with the obligatory references to American exceptionalism, to the founding fathers, to the constitutional principles that have enabled a peaceful transfer of power every four years for more than two centuries. And Barack Obama definitely teed off from that traditional kind of oratory. But the most memorable element of this speech was really that he put that oratory in service of a very specific agenda um, that uh, history tells us, given that this government is divided and that the Republicans control the House, is going to be extremely difficult for Barack Obama to put in practice. So it was notable. Um, almost as a sort of throwing down of the gauntlet by the standards of inaugural addresses. My favorite moment was actually from reading Twitter whilst the president was speaking and uh, a summary provided by one tweeter um, described an abridged version of Obama's speech which would be as follows. Together we will pursue my objectives. We'll see you next time on Loose Talk.